You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Hi, it's Mohammed Hussain from Cyprus Cricket Federation. Uh, welcome to this episode of Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Hi, everyone, and welcome back uh, to another episode of the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. And on the podcast, we have started a new series on the podcast looking at associate nations within cricket and how they are developing the game in their country. Many of us cricket fans know so much about the established cricketing countries and not enough on the associate nations who play cricket. So it would be nice to learn more about these associate countries and via the podcast, people can learn more as well. For today's Associate Cricket Series episode, we are discussing all things Cyprus cricket. And joining me to discuss and talk all things Cyprus cricket is the president of the Cyprus Cricket Federation, Mohamed Hussain. Mohamed, welcome. Thank you, Jack. Thank you for inviting me to your program. Thank you, Mohamed. It's my pleasure to have you on uh, to talk about Cyprus cricket. And thank you so much for giving up your time. Um, I know it's pretty late in Cyprus as we're recording this interview, so we'll we'll try and get through it the best way we can so you get some sleep. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it's it's a pleasure to have you on to have a chat about Cyprus cricket and to learn more about it because many of our listeners and people who watch and listen to the podcast would say, cricket in Cyprus? No. You know, that general reaction that people always have to uh, discovering that cricket are, are played in these type of countries around the world. So. Uh, that's why we're doing this Associate Cricket Series, is to try and educate people more on, on these countries and, and how cricket is making a difference in these countries as well and how these countries want to be a part of the cricketing family. So no doubt you'll tell us about that in, in, in our chat today, Mahabad, and uh, educate people on on Cyprus cricket, which is the, the aim of this episode. But um, well, before we do... I'm not going to educate. I'll just inform them. So, <laughs> yeah. And well, um, some... sort of, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you, you'll definitely uh, teach us a lot um, in this chat uh, in terms of, um, you know, how everything works in Cyprus when it comes to cricket and, and the good work that the team and you are doing over there. Um, before we all, uh, before we talk about that, Mohammed. Uh, as I do with all my guests that I've interviewed on the podcast, I'd like to take them back to when they first got into cricket. And it's been very fascinating listening to people's memories on how they started to get into cricket. So, Mohammed, let's go back to the very beginning growing up. I know that's a long time ago now. Um, what were your earliest memories of watching, playing and even going to the cricket? And who were some of the cricketing idols that you looked up to when you were growing up? Uh, so, Jack, I, I was going through one or two of your episodes, uh, previous episodes. And, and uh, to be honest with you, I saw you asking uh, this question. Uh, and I started wondering, uh, when did I really start playing cricket or when did I got involved? And in all honesty, I have absolutely no idea when I got into cricket and how I got into cricket. I don't know whether it was through school uh, whether it was playing cricket uh, in the, the, the neighborhood, whether it was playing cricket at home, whether it was with my father, whether it was with my aunt who was visiting us. Uh, I have absolutely no idea at this time how I got into cricket and uh, when did I first played cricket. Uh, but, I mean, and, and we, we, we are... We are saying, I mean, you're, you're asking me to recall what happened maybe 35 years ago. Hmm. So that is really, it's really very difficult uh, to recall. But uh, the earliest memory is, uh, is really uh, playing cricket uh, in the garage uh, in, in, in my home, you know. Uh, uh, I'm from Pakistan originally, and I used to live in a city uh, called Islamabad. Uh, and uh, it's a beautiful city, uh, and uh, they've got very nice cricket grounds in Islamabad. Uh, but when I started playing cricket, uh, let's say when I was seven, eight years old, uh, 
the earliest memory is playing in school after school hours, uh, waiting for the school bus uh, to take us back home. And we had to wait sometimes half an hour, sometimes 40 minutes. So we had to uh, pass that time. So we, we used to play cricket, waiting for the school bus to take us back home. Or because the school bus had to do two shifts, basically. So sometimes we were in the first shift, sometimes we were in the second shift. So if you're, if you're in the second shift, uh, we have half an hour after the school, uh, when the school finishes, to play cricket. Or if you're in the first shift, uh, we, we reach school half an hour or 45 minutes uh, before the start of school. So we used to play cricket uh, 7 o'clock in the morning or 6.30 in the morning. Uh, when, when we were at the school. So the, these are the early memories. And uh, and then, yes, of course, playing uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, and these are all good memories. I mean, good, fun time, very good time. And we still cherish those memories. Uh, now, as far as uh, cricketing idols are concerned, uh, oh, I mean, you have this picture of Shane Warren behind you. And to be honest with you, um, I, I rate him the best uh, spin bowler of all time, uh, without any doubt, the best spin bowler. Uh, when it comes to fast bowling, uh, I think it's uh, it's got to be Wasim Akram. Uh, no one has got that many varieties as Wasim Akram. Uh, such a short run up, and he can do magic with the ball. You ask him to bowl whatever ball, he will bowl it. And whether in swing, out swing, reverse swing, uh, those Yorkers, I mean, it, you, you name it, uh, and he can do it. When it comes to batting, I would I would say it would be either Will Richards or Brian Lara, uh, two of the, the best batters. I mean, Viv was way ahead of his time. Uh, he was playing... Uh, T20 style of cricket in 90s, 80s. So he was way ahead of his time. And uh, I mean, fantastic player, unbelievable. Yeah, definitely. Definitely two uh, icons when it comes to West Indies cricket, of course. Viv Richards and Brian Lara. Was a Macram, he wasn't bad <laughs> as, a, as a bowler and, and obviously Warner, of course. Uh, but it was wonderful to hear your memories, Mohammed, and growing up in Pakistan, which is a cricket mad country in itself. It's such a, you know, wonderful passion and enthusiasm for the game as you as you see all the time when you go over to the subcontinent in general. But in Pakistan, they they don't love the game more than anyone else over there. Um, so it was wonderful to hear your your memories and uh, trying to recall them. I know I, I said it was a long time ago growing up. <laughs> Uh, trying to remember all these things. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I think, you know, what strikes me is that everyone has a different path into cricket. So I always love hearing people's memories on how they got into cricket. And and um, every time I interview people on the podcast, it's always a different answer. So I guess that's just the way it is in cricket. Everyone discovers it differently. Um, so it was, thank you, Mohammed, for that, sharing your your introduction into cricket, your cricketing journey and, and how it all started, uh, which was fantastic. Um, I thought to uh, start this interview off, Mohammed, on Cyprus cricket. Let's talk about the history of cricket in Cyprus. Uh, you can learn a lot about cricket from its history. And the history of cricket in Cyprus is quite interesting. I did a bit of research and reading. It's really quite interesting on, on how cricket became a thing in, in Cyprus. So if you can give us a brief overview, Mohammed, on the on the history of Cyprus cricket for us? Yeah, certainly. Uh, I mean, uh, even I didn't know uh, until a few months ago that the first game in Cyprus was played in late 1800s. Uh, but uh, cricket really got into Cyprus after the Second World War, uh, when the British military established its bases in Cyprus and they brought cricket uh, to Cyprus. Now, it, it really, uh, I mean, I, I really struggle to understand why uh, why people did not take up this sport uh, in Cyprus, uh, because if the, if the British military uh, were, were playing the game from 1940s or 50s, 
uh, it's really, it really surprises me why uh, why people did not take up the sport in Cyprus. So uh, in 19 uh, late 1980s, I think I think it was either 87 or 89, uh, the first non-military team uh, was uh, founded or was established. It's called uh, it was called uh, Cyprus Muflons Cricket Club. And it was uh, basically there was a Welsh uh, teacher. I forgot his name. Uh, he put uh, he put a leaflet in a pub, uh, and he was basically asking if anyone wants to join this uh, new team to play against the British uh, military teams. Uh, and then in eighty seven or eighty nine, uh, this team got established. So it was the first non-military team uh, to play cricket in Cyprus. And basically the aim was uh, to, to play some social cricket and, and, and give a non-military people, mostly expats, uh, to, to, to play a game of cricket every now and then. Uh, and uh, to get into the military league, they always used to offer uh, barbecues and drinks uh, to the to the military teams, basically, so that they can get a game. Uh, so they, they started playing in the in the military league, and at that time, in the late eighties, early nineties, there were around uh, twenty four military teams playing cricket in Cyprus, uh, for sure, more than twenty, uh, and. Uh, Cricket was played uh, midweek. There was a, a league going on on Wednesdays. And then uh, also uh, there was cricket going on Saturdays and Sundays. So cricket uh, was played on a regular basis in late 80s and 90s. Uh, then in 1999, uh, Cyprus uh, Cricket uh, became a member of uh, International Cricket Council. Uh, and then for the first time ever in 2003 we had a we had a structured league so first time ever um, was 2003 when we had Cyprus cricket league games uh, that took place uh, and there there were only six teams at that time uh, all uh, i think five mm, civilian sites or non military sites and one military site and the first league was uh, not surprisingly uh, won by the military side. Uh, it was called WSBA, Western Southern Bases Areas team. Uh, they won the first league. Uh, and then uh, since uh, then we have uh, our Cypress Cricket League happening on regular basis uh, since 2003 and now it's uh, 2024 uh, we have uh, nearly 24 teams uh, playing cricket uh, on a regular basis uh, on saturdays and sundays uh, sundays is uh, when our main cricket is played that is t20 cricket and saturdays we have our 40 over league uh, that takes place so in 40 over league this year we have got 10 teams uh, and in T20, we have got 23 teams. Uh, I think uh, never we had that many numbers uh, in Cyprus cricket. So it has grown steadily over a period of time. Uh, so this year is 25 years of uh, our membership with ICC. So you can say 25 years of official cricket in Cyprus. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and thank you for sharing that, uh, how the... The game got established in in Cyprus and the history behind it. It's very similar. I, I've noticed is that cricket in these associate countries is very similar in terms of how it was introduced, mainly from the British, of course, because uh, obviously nearly all the cricketing countries around the world are Commonwealth nations, uh, and cricket is a big part of of uh, all Commonwealth nations. Uh, so you can uh, easily connect that with with all these associate countries in terms of uh, the British introducing the game and establishing the game and then the game takes off and you try and um, 
build it from there. And um, as you mentioned, it's it's built steadily over over the years in Cyprus uh, and uh, continues to grow and develop, as we'll talk about uh, as we get through this uh, interview, Mohammed. But uh, I think a lot of people would have would have uh, found out a lot of new things about how the game got established in Cyprus from just listening to the brief history lesson that you just gave us there uh, about it. Um, so thank you for that. That was very fascinating and, and very interesting to see how the game got started and developed uh, in Cyprus and continues to grow and develop uh, to this day. Um, I thought now, Mohammed, let's talk about the Cyprus national cricket teams, the, the women's and men's teams. Uh, it'd be good to gain your insights on the two teams and learn more about their achievements, the players' stories, because many of the players come from diverse backgrounds uh, within the two teams. Uh, and also some exciting news is that the, the women's team in Cyprus uh, are going to be playing their first ever women's T2 international against Estonia, and that's going to be in June in 2024, later this year. Uh, so that's exciting uh, for Cyprus to finally have a women's team come on to international cricket and um, the men have been playing since 2021 uh, but good to finally get a women's team in and really develop and grow women's cricket in Cyprus and you'll tell us about that in just a moment uh, Mohammed. so uh, Mohammed, for those who may not know a lot about the Cyprus women's and men's teams can you tell us more about them the players and, and some of their stories yeah, sure, uh, Jack. So uh, Cyprus uh, men's uh, team uh, played its uh, first international game. Uh, at that time, it was not uh, T20Is or uh, we, we did not have uh, T20I status. Uh, we only got it in 2018 when ICC changed its uh, rules, basically. So the first time we played uh, against any international opposition was in 2006. We got invitation from ICC uh, Europe office to play in uh, ICC Europe Division 4 championships. Uh, it was 50 over championship uh, in uh, Belgium. And there were uh, three other countries, uh, Luxembourg, uh, Finland, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Slovenia. Uh, and and we finished a very credible second in that uh, outing, and and we we did quite all right. That was way back in two thousand and six. Uh, the person who captained the side, his name is Michalis Kriaku, uh, a very Cypriot name. Uh, he is a Cypriot uh, by origin. Uh, but he, he, his family moved to South Africa some time ago and he learned his uh, cricket in South Africa before uh, moving back to Cyprus. So when he moved back to Cyprus, uh, he got involved into cricket uh, and then uh, he's, a, he's a pretty decent player. I mean, uh, left arm bowler, right, right hand bat, batsman. Uh, he used to open the batting for the Cyprus team as well. He used to open the bowling for Cyprus team, very athletic fielder, uh, and uh, he, he led the side very well, uh, and we, we finished uh, second in that uh, tournament. Uh, so next year again, uh, we got invited uh, by ICC uh, Europe in a, in a 50 over uh, competition. Uh, it was Division 3 that time. And again, it was in Belgium, uh, and uh, we, we finished uh, second to bottom. Uh, so on, uh, I mean, previous year uh, we finished second, and this year we finished second to bottom. It was, I think, eight, eight teams that were involved in that tournament. The only comfort that we can take is the team that finished above us in 2006, Finland. We finished above them the following year. So, uh, so that's that's the only comfort we can take out. Of. Out of there, but uh, but things changed, uh, uh, and it, it, it took a positive turn in 2009, and that was the third time we played in, in an international tournament. And we hosted the tournament in Cyprus. Uh, it was ICC uh, European uh, Division Four 50 over competition. 
So from Division Three, we got relegated to Division Four. Uh, so we were playing in Division Four. We hosted the tournament. It was September uh, 2009 uh, at Happy Valley in Episcopi near Limassol. And the other teams who took part in that competition were Switzerland, uh, Finland, uh, Luxembourg, Austria, uh, Slovenia. Uh, so we uh, we finished uh, top of uh, the table uh, on net run rate. So Cyprus, Austria, Switzerland finished a level on points, and it's just that we had a better net run rate. Uh, we 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 won the competition, and on the final day uh, we we had to restrict Finland to less than 112 to finish top of the table and. We restricted them to 99 or 98, something like that. So, and we won the championship. So we hosted, we hosted the championship. We won it, and that was, uh, I think, uh, one of the highlights of my playing career uh, that I will uh, cherish throughout my life. Uh, and that was the only time I got a gold medal from ICC. So <laughs> I still have it. Uh, and then uh, 2011 uh, was uh, was the next time we play was the next we played an ICC uh, tournament, and that was in Belgium. Uh, and it was a T20 competition, and it was uh, I think again we finished second to bottom. We we only uh, we only did better than Sweden in that tournament. Uh, 2012, we were again uh, invited to an ICC event. Uh, it was in Greece at this time. And again, we didn't do very well. Uh, and then uh, after that, we had a big gap of six years. And we were, we were in Holland, uh, in Netherlands. And again, in a, in a group of uh, six, uh, we finished bottom. So we, we didn't do very well between 2009, from 2009 to 2018. Uh, but then uh, in 2021, uh, yeah, after 2018, we played in, we played next in 2021 in international cricket. And that was in Cyprus. So we hosted uh, a T20I uh, trilateral uh, series. It was uh, Cyprus, Estonia, and Isle of Man. And before the tri, uh, tri series, we had a bilateral means, uh, with uh, against Estonia, uh, two games bilateral series. So we uh, we finished a second in that tri series. Uh, so, and then uh, the following year in 2022, we were in Finland. Uh, we took part in ICC uh, European Championships. And we did pretty well. Uh, we finished uh, fourth. Uh, we finished in the semifinals, basically. There were 10 teams taking part, and, and we finished fourth in the, in the tournament. So, that was, that was a better performance. And, and now, after, uh, since then, we haven't played any T20Is, uh, and uh, this year, 2024, we are hosting Estonia again in June, uh, and then we will be in Guernsey uh, playing ICC uh, qualifiers, T20I qualifiers. Uh, but before we play the qualifiers, uh, we will be hosting Estonia, as I just said, uh, T20I bilateral uh, six games series. And at the same time, uh, we'll be hosting the Estonia women team, uh, women national team, who will be playing against Cyprus women national team. Uh, and I think we are not the only ones uh, who have only one local team. And, and that team is making up our national team as well. So, uh, uh, the girls uh, or the ladies uh, have been practicing uh, for some time now, uh, and uh, 
I think more than a year now, more than nearly two years, we have been practicing and uh, because of uh, lack of numbers, we were, we were able to provide them any games domestically. So at times they, they used to play against uh, youngsters, sometimes just between themselves. And one or two of the players are playing uh, in the men's uh, T20 competition as well. Uh, one of our players, uh, she's based in Scotland, so she'll be flying uh, to Cyprus in June to play uh, in the T20I uh, bilateral series against Estonia. Uh, now, uh, we, 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 we tried to put together uh, a league program for them. We started with softball cricket, uh, and I'm going back 2014-15, when we, when we took this initiative. Uh, and I even got my wife involved into playing cricket. Uh, and I'll tell you a funny story since I mentioned about my wife. I, I was, I mean, I got engaged in May 2002 and we were thinking of getting married in September 2000. Uh, sorry, I got engaged in May 2012 and uh, we were planning to get married in September 2012, but in September 2012, ICC uh, had arranged this uh, tournament in Greece when, uh, where Cyprus was to play. Uh, and so I postponed my wedding to January 2013 so that I can play cricket in Greece uh, for Cyprus. But that's the sacrifice, you know? So my wife knows uh, I, I'm a little, a little bit involved in cricket so she she got involved into cricket as well uh so she she was part of our uh, our team in 2014-15 uh, so we we tried to put uh, some sort of a structure to women cricket uh, from that time uh and uh, then uh, that that uh, that team at that time was doing quite all right but then our captain left for Indonesia uh, of the team, I forgot, uh, uh, her husband got relocated. Uh, so she had to go away with, uh, go with him. The team manager and one of the senior uh, players, uh, she moved to Netherlands and another senior player, uh, she had some medical issues. So the team got disbanded. Really. Uh, and then two or three years ago, uh, there was uh, some interest uh, amongst the ladies and they started knocking on our doors. Uh, and so we said, yeah, why not? So for the last two, three years, uh, there is, uh, there is uh, the ladies are playing uh, softball cricket quite regularly, six aside softball. Uh, and we have done a lot on uh, when it comes to girls cricket through our schools program, which of course we will speak later during the chat. Uh, but uh, this women team that we will be playing against Estonia uh, has been together for the last couple of years. Yeah, um, and that's fantastic to hear your insights on on both teams, the women's and the men's, um, and how they're developing and how it all started for, for both of them and for the women that's they're going to start their journey very soon and um, embarking on that international career and journey um, whereas the men uh, will continue on where they where they left off in terms of the environment and the culture can you just tell us about the environment and the culture and the and uh, you know behind the scenes stuff within the team just describe to us the environment and the culture and how that mixes in with, with both teams and how does that affect their cricket? Yes, I mean, you know, uh, in associate cricket, it's always a struggle. Uh, when you're playing for Australia, let's say, we're all Australian, uh, mm. except, if, if, except if you're Osman Khaja, who, who have naturalized, and then still he, is an, he considers himself an Aussie now. So if you're playing for Pakistan, you're all Pakistanis. If you're playing for Bangladesh, you're all Bangladeshis. I'm not going to mention England, uh, 
uh, who had hmm. maybe three or four South Africans, maybe, <laughs> or had at one time they had. Hmm. Peter Strauss, Kevin Peterson, and Jonathan Trout, and who knows who. Uh, and even now, it's Ben Stokes. Uh, he's, he's got news, he, he has he's from New Zealand, most probably, or he's yeah. doing certain so associate cricket is uh, is quite different when you have so many different nationalities or cultures, uh, ethnicities uh, involved, and you're you're still uh, trying to uh, trying to take the game uh, to the locals, and and then you say you have a national team, uh, and it does not have any uh, any any locals really, yeah. uh, or. Any, any any Cypriots, you know. Uh, so you have uh, your uh, you have your uh, expats or migrants from India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, uh, and uh, England, and uh, Zimbabwe. So in in our national team, in Cyprus national team, we have got we've got an. Uh, we have got an English player. Uh, we have got one from Zimbabwe uh, who is currently in, residing in England, uh, and then we have got a Cypriot residing in England. Yeah, he's part of our national team as well. Uh, and then uh, recently, uh, uh, we got uh, contacted by a half Cypriot living in Australia. Uh, I don't have much details about him at this time, so I cannot talk more about him. Uh, and then we had uh, one uh, one guy who played uh, first class cricket uh, for Lancashire County, South African Cypriot. He's he's living in South Africa. He never got involved into Cyprus cricket. He wanted to. I, I, I'm not going to blame him. It, uh, but the, uh, at the wrong time, it was during COVID, and then the tournament didn't happen, so he could not get involved. Uh, so, so many different nationalities. You you have Indians, you have Pakistanis, you have Sri Lankans, you have Bangladeshis, Nepalese, uh, English, uh, Zimbabwe, and then Cypriot based outside Cyprus. So you're talking about at least eight different nationalities uh, playing for one team that is Cyprus. So at times you have to tell them, listen, you're not playing for South Africa, you're not playing for uh, England, you're not playing for uh, Zimbabwe, you're not playing for Sri Lanka, you're playing for Cyprus. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, that's a struggle. Mm -hmm. And then and then you have uh, at times people talking in Sinhalese, people talking in Punjabi, people talking in Hindi, uh, and nobody talks in Greek because... Uh, they're not comfortable uh, speaking Greek, which is the local language. So in the end, uh, we say, okay, I mean, can everyone please speak English at least? So yeah, communication at times becomes a problem as well. And then people or uh, players prefer to sit in their own groups. You know, if they're from Pakistan, they want to sit in their own group. Yeah. Uh, from Sri Lanka, they want to sit in their own group. And yes, they. But then you have to tell them, listen, this is Cyprus. You all have to sit together, eat together, play together. So, uh, and it's not that uh, they do it on purpose. It's 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 natural, you know. Mm. Uh, and and when when we tell them, they they say, yeah, sorry, uh, our mistake. Yeah, you're right, and we, we should act uh, differently. We should act like a team. So uh, at times you have to remind them you're playing for Cyprus. So with so many different ethnicities, nationalities involved. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's that's a big problem with associate countries around the world. Um, they always face that problem trying to, you know, get the team together and bond together. As you said, so many different nationalities you know, passport holders and people who have family in that particular country go and play. And, you know, you have other people that come in from other countries as well to, 
to play for that particular associate nation. So it can be a bit of a, a difficult challenge as you outlined there, but um, uh, hopefully uh, you can overcome that and, and get the team or both of the teams gelling together and, and hopefully play some good cricket out in the field. Um, in terms of performance and, and that, are you, have you seen a, a big difference in performance? Uh, uh, you know, the performance is improving with every tournament, every game that the national sides play, well, uh, the men's side, because the women's haven't played much. Obviously, they haven't played any T20 nationals yet until later on this year, as we've mentioned. But for the men's side, have you seen a lot of improvement from them over the years since they have come together as a group? So, I mean, uh, as compared to 2018, when when we didn't fare very well, the European qualifiers, uh, 2022, uh, we performed very well. Uh, it was a much settled group. Uh, and people, uh, players, knew their role, what they have to do, what is expected of them. Uh, so they did much better. Uh, and I mean, I must say that uh, we had a very uh, capable captain at that time as well, uh, Guru Pratap Singh. Uh, and, uh, and he led the team very well uh, in Finland. 2022. Uh, now, since then, we haven't played any T20Is, so I cannot uh, tell you at this time uh, how we will be performing against Estonia in June. But uh, we should do well. Uh, we should because uh, we we are playing home, so we should take advantage of home conditions. Uh, we, we know these conditions better than the visitors, so uh, I'm pretty hopeful. But uh, uh, the acid test uh, will come in August in Guernsey, and uh, that's the time when we really find out uh, where we stand. Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially, you know, like a qualifying tournament, that's the make or break, isn't it? Whether or not you can progress or show improvement from the previous tournaments. Um, in terms of that, um, expectations and goals do you have any expectations and goals on making uh you know progressing well in qualifiers like t20 world cup qualifiers which is a realistic uh path for cyprus and for associate countries to to progress because the t20 world cups expanded obviously this year in the caribbean usa so more teams are playing is it is that a goal um from your point is to hopefully make it to a a global tournament in the near, well in in the uh, long term. I mean, uh, listen. I mean, everyone uh, has the right to dream, and you cannot deny anyone their right. But you have to be realistic. Uh, the tournament that we will be taking part in August, uh, we are in a group of uh, there. There are ten teams taking part in that tournament. Uh, and we are ranked uh, somewhere towards the bottom part. So, I mean, realistically speaking, uh, if we finish around mid table, uh, we'll, we will be satisfied with our performance. Uh, now, if you, if you say that, uh, yeah, let's start dreaming and we can win the tournament, I mean, that would be far fetched, really. I mean, uh, I don't see that happening. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that's uh, totally true. Um, but obviously it's a, it's a, it's a dream and you're, you're working towards it and trying to get better and improve and hopefully uh, one day make it to a, a global event, which is the end result. Uh, but it will take a bit of time and, and that's all right. It's uh the process it's the learning process it's the developing process as all associate nations go through is to uh you know play more games and get better and learn from their performances which is uh, the whole point uh of cricket really is just to to learn and and get better as a cricketer and as a person and as a team so uh and as you said realistically speaking uh 
uh, not the priority at the moment. It's just about getting better and improving each and every game, which is the right way to go about it. Um, in terms of uh, the national teams, do you see much support from the locals in Cyprus? Many Cypriots getting behind the the national team when they when they play. So, uh, I mean, we are still uh, trying uh, to promote cricket locally. Uh, you know, uh, cricket is uh, something of an alien sport uh, in, in Europe, not only in Cyprus, uh, in, in whole continent Europe. And, and I, I think most probably in Americas as well. Uh, and it's, it's very different in, in Asia and Australia. Uh, so not many people know about cricket. Um, and we are trying to take cricket to the people because we know people are not coming to cricket. So at this time, I mean, you can, you can say that we, we, we are still striving to get local support. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It will, it will take a bit of time for that to happen naturally, uh, but it will happen eventually. It just takes a bit of time, these things. Uh, people get familiarised with the sport, uh, which is often a challenge in, in associate cricket. Um, uh, just one more question before we move on to our next uh, talking point in this uh, chat, Mohammed. Um, what does the future look like for both for the the women's team and the men's team, how do you see the future going forward in terms of uh, the teams, the national teams going forward? How do you see the future? Uh, men's team, uh, as, I, as I just mentioned, is, is going on uh, since the last 18 years. 2006 was the first year when we, uh, when we first played any sort of an international tournament. Women's is the first year, uh, but uh, I'll be very open and honest with you on this. I mean, the women team uh, has only one uh, Cypriot national. Uh, so if if you if you are trying to build something for long term, uh, you you cannot rely on the expats or the migrants because you don't know for how long they are going to stay in Cyprus. So, uh, women uh, cricket uh, is a struggle. It's it's in it's a very early stage. It's a very early stage at the moment, uh, and we need to work hard uh, when it comes to women cricket. We still need to work very hard. Uh, and what we are doing at the moment is we are trying, as I was saying, that. We are trying to take cricket to the people. So recently, what happened, and this is uh, this is something a very big achievement for ourselves. Uh, we went to the uh, Ministry of Education last year, uh, and we said to them, uh, we would like to introduce cricket in public schools, and. We don't want any government funding. Uh, we will provide equipment uh, to the schools. We will provide coaching uh, to the PE teachers and to the school children. Uh, and the schools don't have to pay anything as well. And uh, the only thing that we want is access to the schools. So the Minister of Education, uh, she, she, she listened to us. Basically, we, we wrote a letter. So she, she came back to us after, after a month. And she granted us permission. Uh, we can introduce cricket in the public uh, primary schools all across Cyprus for this academic year. So for us, it's a, it's a big thing, uh, but then we have to manage our own financial and human resources as well. Uh, 
as you may know, we are nearly towards the bottom of the ICC food chain. So we don't get that much uh, money as well. So for that, I'm thankful to our sponsors. As you can see on my shirt, uh, we've got a Cricket School Program, that is a European Cricket Network uh, Cricket School Program. And they are helping us towards uh, uh, our schools program as well, uh, developing grassroots cricket. And then chart word navigation. Uh, this they said we exclusively want to sponsor only youth cricket activities. And then uh, this year we got a new sponsor, Hurry Curry, uh, and we have a long-term sponsor, Bow Financial. So these are the guys who are helping us financially, apart from ICC, uh, when it comes to grassroots development. Uh, so with their support. Uh, we got into schools this year and uh, this year we are saying that we will do most of the uh, primary schools uh, in Paphos region and Limassol region and we are talking about nearly 50 plus schools or nearly 50 schools. And we are talking about 10,000 kids playing cricket in Cyprus uh, this year. And that's a big, big number for us. Uh, and uh, this is the first step uh, towards establishing a proper women or men national team. Because if we don't introduce cricket to these youngsters now, you will never get Cypriots involved into cricket. So if they start young, hopefully there is a very good chance in five, 10 years time, let's say 10 years time, they'll be interested in playing uh, for the Cyprus national team, either for men's team or for women's team. So that's the plan. Uh, and that's our vision at this time that we keep working uh on our schools program try to develop cricket amongst the youngsters at grassroots levels and hopefully uh we will uh, we will succeed uh and hopefully we'll have these youngsters involved uh in men's and women's cricket uh in the next five ten years time yeah definitely Good to, good to hear that in terms of um, how, how you're going about these things in terms of um, growing the sport and encouraging uh, youngsters uh, via the school programs to take up cricket and hopefully, uh, you know, have dreams and ambitions of playing for the national sides in the years to come. So it's fantastic uh, what you're doing there, Mohammed, and the team. And it was also uh, great to hear your insights on the national teams as well. And I think everyone would agree with me. We we wish you all the best in terms of success going forward. And, and hopefully you can rise up through the rankings. It's, it's a very difficult thing to start from the bottom and go your way up. And um, obviously for those who, who don't know is that in associate cricket, the higher that you're ranked, the more funding and money you get from the ICC. It's a, it's a complicated system. Uh, to explain, but that's how it works, basically. So let's hope Cyprus can get up through those rankings and do well at tournaments and show improvement and, and hopefully make uh, Cyprus proud and Cypriots proud as well uh, of their national team. So we wish you all the best, Mohammed, the teams uh, and, and the stuff that you're doing behind the scenes to, to get the teams uh, to that level where they need to be. Um, so exciting times ahead. And, and, and we will watch with close interest on how uh, both the women's and the men's team go about things when it comes to series and tournaments and, and all that stuff. So, as I said, um, uh, the future looks pretty pretty bright and optimistic. Um, I thought now we talk about the growth and development of cricket within Cyprus, Mohammed, in terms of getting cricket into local communities, clubs, schools, grassroots, etc. And you've already touched on that a little bit. Uh, just before. Uh, but, Mohammed, this is one of the challenges that many associate nations have is how they 
introduce cricket and promote it, that's easier said than done. And, you know, uh, as a cricket federation in Cyprus, you, and as the president yourself, you must be asking your questions, sitting back in your chair, scratching your head and saying, oh, how do we go about doing these things in, in terms of getting cricket into, well, first of all, grassroots cricket, establishing local clubs and communities and local communities, and competitions and pathway systems, how do we build that up? in terms of identifying talent and, you know, making sure they have a pathway to the to international cricket, basically. Um, and having facilities, that's a big problem as well in associate countries like nets, grounds available for people to go and play cricket at and access in their local areas, um, which we often take, it, take for granted in full member countries like Australia, for example. You can go down to your park and there's a net, whereas in Cyprus that's not the case. It's... Uh, pretty difficult to maintain and, and get facilities up and running and also making cricket accessible to people as well uh, you know, whether on TV or the internet or streams or whatever try to make it accessible for people to watch and and access to and also as you mentioned before Muhammad getting in into schools cricket into schools and programs uh, which is important as well so Muhammad what challenges does the Cyprus Cricket Federation have in trying to grow and develop cricket in the Cypriot community? And do you see cricket becoming a mainstream sport in Cyprus anytime soon? So uh, our challenges are no different to any other associate country, uh, whether you are in the Netherlands or in uh, Spain or in Germany, uh, you all have the same challenges. Uh, now, some would say that they are getting more money, but their challenges are the same. The money that they are getting is still not sufficient. So, first thing, I mean, I, I'm very content with the money that we are, or the funding that we're getting from ICC. I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, it's all about managing your resources. Uh, so we are we are happy or we are content with where we are when it comes to finances, uh, and we have to uh, we have to see. I mean, the challenges. I mean, how how to tackle them basically, how to address them. Uh, and challenges, as you just mentioned, uh, facilities. I mean. We don't have any indoor facility uh, because uh, one of the main reasons is uh, we have got such a beautiful weather in Cyprus. Uh, we play cricket nearly uh, 12 months a year. Uh, so our 2023 20, season uh, finished on Boxing Day. Uh, and then 2024 season started mid January. So, I mean, we don't need, uh, we are not really that desperate to have an indoor facility. But obviously, it is good to have one uh, because the summer months are quite uh, hot. Uh, sometimes uh, the, the temperature reaches 45 Celsius. Uh, so, it's, it's a bit hot, you know, to play cricket outdoors. Well, we have played cricket outdoors in that weather uh, as well, that temperature. Uh, so challenges are, yes, facility is one challenge. Uh, we, are, we are fortunate uh, in a way that uh, we can access the British military grounds and uh, we have got quite a few of them accessible to us. Uh, so we, we are lucky uh, in that sense. We've got beautiful grounds. Uh, so whenever you're in Cyprus, I will take you to a few of our cricket grounds. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, so the facility is not really a very big challenge, but it's still a challenge. We are, we are trying to develop facilities outside the military areas yep. uh, so we can have our own facility whenever we want to access it. At, at, at current time, we have only one facility, uh, uh, which, which is outside the military area, which we can access whenever we want. And that has helped us grow cricket tremendously. Uh, 
in 2020, uh, we had only 10, uh, nearly 10, 12 teams taking part in our league program. Uh, now we have nearly 24. So we have doubled our numbers in, in three or four years. So, and that's, that's the benefit of uh, having a facility which is accessible uh, anytime. Uh, the other main uh, challenge is uh, human resources. I mean, we, we rely a lot on volunteers. Uh, now, when it comes to youth cricket, uh, it's the parents who volunteer at times, or it's the club members uh, volunteer at times, the national team uh, players who volunteer at times. So we, we rely a lot on volunteers uh, to make cricket happen. Uh, same goes with umpiring at the games as well. Uh, again, we rely on the volunteers to help us out when it comes to umpiring. So human resources uh, is, is another problem, uh, or another, not a problem, a challenge, I would say. So these, these are the two main challenges, really. Uh, I'm not going to talk about financial challenges. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm content. Uh, fine. We have to live within our own means. And we, I think we have got uh, good enough finances that we can live within our own means this time. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, that, that's very encouraging to hear. Uh, that there is some growth and development of the sport in Cyprus and, and uh, obviously uh, some challenges as all associate nations have. Um, I always ask this question to everyone, Mohammed, that I've interviewed on this associate cricket series uh, to, <clears throat> excuse me, many of the people that I've interviewed, um, and that's the relationship with the ICC. How do you, how do you see the relationship between Cyprus and the ICC? Do you have a good relationship, uh, very understanding and supportive? Fantastic relationship. I mean, uh, we, we, are, we are on very friendly terms. Uh, whenever I have knocked on their door, they have always supported me uh, or, or supported Cyprus. Uh, they, they are always... Uh, available to take your call whenever you want to speak with them uh, and I mean with, with WhatsApp it's even a lot more easier now you you send them a text message and you'll have an answer I mean pretty soon uh, so I mean at this time I, mean, I would say that we have a very good relationship with ICC and I think they can say the same about us as well uh, and Thankful uh, to them for their support. Uh, whenever we seek any advice or any solution to a problem, uh, they're always there to help us out. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, that's good to hear. And that's usually the same answer that I initially get, really. It's, yeah, friendly relationship. Uh, the regional bodies of the ICC, whether it be Europe or Americas or whatever, are pretty receptive. They're pretty um, helpful and, and wanting to help and, and that's fantastic. Uh, do you think they could do better, though, the ICC? Obviously, they've come under a little, little bit of scrutiny, obviously, with how international cricket is run. But do you think they can do better when it comes to certain aspects, when it comes to associate cricket more broadly? I mean, uh, the, if you speak with, with, the, with, the, with the associate countries, uh, their problem or their main uh issue would be finances that we need more money from ICC uh ICC has a uh, has uh, has a very uh well defined policy how it funds its members now if, if you're involved uh with ICC uh, over a longer period of time like I uh, I know how much uh, things have changed over a period of time. It was, it was very different uh, in the early 2000s, let's say, or the late 90s, when you had two tiers, that is associate cricket and affiliated cricket. 
So if, if my memory serves me well, uh, because I'm getting old as well, hmm. uh, I think affiliates were getting either 10000 or $15,000 a year. Yeah. Uh, and associates were getting $100,000 a year. Uh, so there was a big difference uh, between, uh, between the two. And then everything changed, uh, I think, uh, in early, uh, well, in the late, around 2012 or something like that. Uh, and then everyone became an associate uh, member. Then there were, instead of three tiers, full members, associates, and affiliates, then there were only two tiers, full member and associates. Uh, the only difference was between the associates were voting associates and non-voting associates. So top 40 associate members had voting rights at like ICC, AGM, and the remaining still do not have any voting rights. They, they have only one vote through their global rep, basically. So the, the, only, uh, the only complaint you will get uh, from associate cricket about ICC is, is the funding policy, but I'm not going to complain about it because I know uh, how things have changed over, over, over a period of time. And, and we are going in, in the right direction. Uh, the scorecard funding is there. The competition grant is there. So it's really up to the countries to perform well and access uh, more funding. Uh, so countries really have to, have to improve themselves. Uh, and ICC is there to, uh, to give them the support, the financial support that they need. Uh, you help yourself, basically. That's the thing. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, and also another, another thing as well as the Olympics, yeah, the inclusion of cricket in the Olympics. And that's a big impact on associate cricket as well because, um, you know, we've – any Olympic sport, you get funding and uh, you get backing as well. Has there been any talk about that in terms of funding in Cyprus? With cricket now being an Olympic sport, have you had any approaches from the government or sporting bodies? So uh, we are not yet a member of Cyprus National Olympic Committee. We have submitted uh, our membership application and hopefully... Uh, this year, uh, maybe this month, uh, we will become a member of Cyprus National Olympic Committee. Uh, it should have happened end of last year, but I'm very positive sometime this year it will happen. And then we will have access to Olympic funding, uh, which is available either through uh, Cyprus National Olympic Committee or Cyprus Sports Organization, or directly through uh, International Olympic Committee uh, Solidarity Fund. So uh, we are we are pretty positive that if uh, not this year, uh, next year we will be able to uh, access uh, some Olympic funding. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's definitely a big game changer when it comes to associate cricket, even though if. Uh, the country in these associate countries don't qualify for the Olympics, but you know, it's on TV, people can see it, and people can say, Oh, I didn't know that we had a cricket team. Um, I take up the game myself. So it's a, it's a positive thing, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's not only about uh, playing in Olympics, uh, it's there are other games that you can be part of. Uh, in Europe, you have the small states games, uh, so you can be part of that if you're a member of your uh, national uh, Olympic committee. Then you have the Mediterranean games, then you've got the Commonwealth games. So there are so many other games that you can be part of uh, apart from the Olympic games. Uh, and I mean, there you have the media exposure, you, you, you get promoted more, so yeah, I mean, uh, the opportunities are are there, and there are far more opportunities. Uh, so I hope that cricket becomes a permanent sport uh, at Olympics. Uh, you know, in LA we are there, and 
I'm pretty sure in Brisbane we will be there. Uh, but who knows after that uh, where the Olympics will be and whether we will be part of Olympics or not. But uh, I'm a very positive person. So I think we will do well in LA as a sport. We will do very well in Brisbane as a sport. And I think Olympic, uh, International Olympic Committee will say that we want cricket at every Olympic game. So hopefully cricket will become a permanent sport uh, in Olympic games. Definitely, definitely, absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be a part of the Olympics after LA and Brisbane and the years to come, but we'll have to wait and see what the IOC decide on that. Um, in terms of your involvement, Mohammed, just tell us briefly how you got involved in uh, Cyprus cricket. Uh, just tell us about that story. Yes, uh, interesting story. Uh, I got involved in 2004-05. I don't remember the exact year. Uh, I was uh, studying at the university uh, and I found out through one of my classmates uh, that Cyprus uh, Cricket is organizing a six-a-side competition. Uh, and we said that let's uh, put together a team and play in that competition. But uh, we were unable to put together a team, but that's the first time I found out that cricket has been playing in Cyprus. So I explored a bit more and I looked on the Cyprus Cricket website. And then I found out there are uh, eight teams playing in the league uh, at that time. And I am based in Limassol. So in Limassol, there were four options, or four teams playing uh, or, or based in Limassol. So one was uh, MDOCS, but I know they're, they're a software development company. So it's only their employees that play uh, cricket for them. Then there was the British military team, and then there was a Sri Lankan team. And the only team uh, which I could be part of was really Muklons, uh, because they had a very open policy, anyone can play. Uh, so I, I asked, uh, I, well, I sent an email to, to Muklons, uh, captain at that time and he said yeah why not so i i, I got involved into cyprus cricket uh, 2004 and 5 somewhere there I started playing uh, then i got involved uh, in the board around 2006 uh, in fact 2005 6 somewhere there yeah uh, and then uh, I, I helped Cyprus Cricket organize the ICC uh, European Division Four Championship in 2009. In 2010, I uh, became the head of the cricket in Cyprus. Uh, and uh, since uh, then, I'm leading Cyprus Cricket. Uh, so yeah, that's how I got involved into Cyprus Cricket. Yeah, um, fantastic for, for you sharing that. It's, it's great to hear how you came about and uh, get involved in, in um, uh, Cyprus cricket. Um, and being the president, of course, which is a big responsibility, it's a challenging job. Uh, just describe to, to people who may be listening, who uh, may not be sure about, you know, how to go about running a cricket organisation or any sporting uh, organization. What are some of the challenges that you have encountered in this position over the years in terms of, you know, trying to oversee everything when it comes to Cyprus cricket? Uh, the main thing is uh, to keep everyone together. So that, that's the biggest challenge. And sometimes you don't have like-minded people. Uh, so it, becomes uh, pretty difficult. So if, if you have like-minded people, you can work with a very small team and you can make things happen. So I'm, I'm 
I'm very pleased to tell you that at this time, although it's a very small team, uh, but uh, we work together and uh, we, we try to support each other. So being the president does not mean that uh, the president does not do anything or he just uh, tell people do this, do that, or else you will not be part of the organization. Uh, that's not how the president works, at least in Cyprus cricket. Uh, basically, you have to dirty your hands and you have to make things happen. Sometimes you have to act like a groundsman. Sometimes you have to put on your umpiring hat or the scorer's hat. Uh, and sometimes you have to be a coach. Sometimes you have to put your tutoring uh, hat and become a coach or an umpire teacher. Uh, sometimes you have to uh, go to schools and do some coaching at the school. Sometimes you have to uh, go uh, and do coaching uh, on a Saturday morning. Uh, you have to help the league secretary as well at times, uh, sort out a few things. Uh, sometimes you have to sit on the disciplinary committee uh, to help uh, tackle a few problems. Uh, so you have to wear so many different hats, basically. And at the same time, you have to help uh, the marketing guys as well. Uh, marketing stuff, whether it's social media, or sponsorships. So being the president does not mean that you have to tell. You have to you have to get involved and wear all those different hats and make things happen. Uh, because again, in the associate cricket, you don't have the luxury uh, of uh, that many employees working for you. You rely on the volunteers, and you have to you have to be an example basically. People should look up to you uh, and not see you as, as a person not doing anything so that they have the excuse that oh, he, he's not doing anything, so why should we do? He does not care, why should we care? So you have to be a good example that people can look up to and so that you can make things happen. Definitely. Um, absolutely. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you for sharing that Mohammed, in, in terms of uh, what it takes to be a leader in these organizations in terms of associate countries in cricket and and also uh, the complexities with the job as well uh, gives people a bit of an understanding of what goes on behind the scenes which is so integral to the success of these associate countries is the people behind the scenes and the team as you mentioned uh, to try and keep it all together and and do what they can to to help out and make it a better a better organization or, or sport and promote the game of cricket in Cyprus so it's, it's fantastic to hear that and also it was fantastic to hear your thoughts on the growth and development side as well of the game in Cyprus some good stuff happening there uh, with the schools program as you mentioned earlier um, and some other things happening as well which is fantastic to uh to hear and very encouraging signs going forward so uh yeah, obviously it's a <clears throat> excuse me a very important aspect of cricket is trying to gr uh, grow and develop it um which can bring challenges but uh from what you've said those challenges are being met head on and and trying to be overcome and and hopefully they will be and and hopefully the game will grow steadily in the years to come in Cyprus, which is which is fantastic. So uh, great to hear your thoughts on that uh, as well, Mohammed. Um, well, Mohammed, we're, we've reached uh, our last uh, topic of this discussion. I know it's been a bit of a long one, uh, but thank you for sticking with us for this amount of time. I know it's pretty late in Cyprus as we record and speak in this interview. So we'll try and wrap it up as best we can. Um, but for the last topic, Mohammed, I thought we'd talk about what the future holds for cricket in Cyprus. I know it's very hard to predict the future, as as we know. It can be very uncertain. But, uh, Mohammed, how do you see Cyprus cricket and associate cricket 
going into the future? Your thoughts on that, looking in the crystal ball, how do you predict the future going forward? As you said, uh, it's uncertain. Uh, nobody can predict it. Uh, but uh, I, I see a lot more T20s uh, getting played. Uh, I don't see many uh, associates uh, playing test cricket. Uh, in keeping in mind uh, Ireland, whenever they play test cricket, they lose money rather than they gain money. Uh, so I don't know if, 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 if that's the direction associates want to go to. Uh, but I see a lot more money getting involved in associated cricket. Uh, you can see it with U.S. cricket, uh, what's happening over there. Uh, you can see with uh, Canada, you can see it in UAE, all these uh, big franchise cricket tournaments happening over there. So I see uh, cricket becoming more commercial uh, and associates taking advantage of it as well. Uh, and, and that's not very uh, far away. Uh, I see it happening very soon in most of the countries. Associates just have to get uh, the facilities right. If, if, they, if they get some decent facilities, uh, they, can, uh, they can access uh, these commercial opportunities. Uh, and and the thing is, I mean, if you look at ICC's scorecard model, the funding model, uh, the more money or the more non-ICC income you generate, ICC reward you more. So the more commercial opportunities you gain, you'll be getting even more money from ICC. So it's really up to the associates uh, to up their game and uh, the main thing is the facility. I mean, take it purely from a business point of view. If you don't have a shop to sell your product, how are people going to come and buy your product? Uh, cricket is not, at this time, a digital product. So you have to have a shop. And by shop, I mean you have to have a facility. You have to have a ground. So the better the facility that you have got, there is a better chance that you attract uh, more sponsors, more commercial opportunities, more playing opportunities, uh, and access to more funding and more monies, basically. So that's what I see happening in, in the near future. Yeah, definitely. Um... What about Cyprus cricket? How do you see the future of cricket in Cyprus? Cricket in Cyprus, uh, it's a challenge as any other associated cricket is. And again, you cannot predict. So the only thing I would say is that uh, we just have to keep working hard and uh, make things happen. Uh, and just uh, uh, hope for good fortune. Definitely. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Mohammed, for sharing your thoughts on the future of Cyprus cricket and associate cricket going into the future. Uh, as we've said, it's very uncertain, as we know, the future. But let's hope the future is bright and optimistic for both Cyprus cricket and associate cricket going forward. I think that's what everyone wants in the game, is for associate nations to prosper and to uh, be a part of, of cricket and, you know, be a part of this great game that we all love. So uh, we'll have to wait and see in the years to come. Um, well, thank you, Mohammed, for joining me today for this Associate Cricket Series episode to discuss all things Cyprus cricket. I've enjoyed it immensely. I've learned a lot uh, from chatting to you for the last hour and also. Um, I know it's pretty late in Cyprus and <laughs> you'll want to get some sleep because um, you have some... Um, I'll tell you what... Uh... It's, it's already midnight here. It's uh, two minutes to midnight. And uh, tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, I have to catch a flight to Spain uh, because my club, uh, Muflons, are taking part in the European Champions League. Uh, so I'll be leaving home 7.30 in the morning. 
So I've got uh, a couple of hours to get some sleep, but uh, it, it's, it's, it was really nice uh, speaking with you and uh, discussing and promoting Cyprus cricket. And uh, of course, you are more than welcome whenever you come to Cyprus and we can chat even more about uh, Cyprus cricket and uh, you'll learn a lot more about uh, Cyprus cricket. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to speak uh, in your program. It's my pleasure, Mohammed. It's my pleasure. And that's the whole aim of the series, really. This Associate Cricket Series is about giving people a voice and a platform to uh, promote Associate Cricket and uh, to pretty much educate people on cricket in these countries because uh, they do play cricket um, in certain countries around the world. And the passionate people, they're enthusiastic people that love cricket and, and want what's best for the game. And uh, they want to do what, what they can. So it's my pleasure, Mohammed, to, to have you on. And thank you so much for giving up your time uh, to come and speak to me today about Cyprus cricket. And uh, um, Mohammed, if people want to get in touch with you uh, or Cyprus cricket, where can they do that? Uh, they can just send us an email uh, at info at cricket.cy uh, or there is a phone number uh, plus 357-7000-2742 or uh, they can just uh, Google us or get on Facebook, facebook.com slash cypresscricket or YouTube, youtube.com slash Cypress Cricket TV or Instagram, Instagram.com slash Cypress Cricket or Twitter, Twitter.com slash Cypress Cricket. So there are so many means uh, to, so many ways to get in touch with us. We are even on TikTok, TikTok.com slash at Cypress Cricket. So, I mean, all major, all popular social media channels, we are there. Uh, I already shared our uh, email address and the telephone number. So it's, it's very easy to get in touch with us. Definitely. Um, we'll leave a link to all of those in the description of this episode. So if people want to learn more about Cyprus cricket or get in touch with Muhammad personally to ask him questions uh, about Cyprus sure. cricket, he's more than happy to, to do that. Uh, so as I mentioned, we'll leave links to those in the uh, description of this episode for people to check out. Uh, before we go, uh, remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Also, the podcast is available on Anchor, Spotify, and on Apple Podcasts. Once again, thank you, Mohammed, for joining me today to discuss all things Cyprus cricket. I hope all of you watching or listening to this Associate Cricket Series episode learned a lot about cricket in Cyprus from Mohammed. Until next time, keep safe and bye for now.